Hello everybody, can you hear me? Is this on? Yeah. I'll use this. Ah, okay, very good. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just felt to read. Um, I love, I mean, it's just been such a beautiful presence of God here already tonight. And um, just with that breakthrough, I was really, um, as you were speaking that, Deb, the Lord spoke to me to just add this for you guys to your thoughts and your meditations. <clears throat> And it says in Isaiah 58, and it says, And then shall your light break forth like the morning, and your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And then you will call upon the Lord, and you will cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, and the point of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. And those from among you shall build up the old waste places you shall rise at the foundations of many generations and you shall be called to be the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I think there's never been such a time, you know, as this time that we're living in today, that that needs to be our mandate, yeah? I mean, we are here um, appointed by God and for God for this time and for this season. It's not a mistake that you were born when you were born it's not a mistake that you're here at this time alive in the earth god has got a plan for your life amen, amen. and he's got a plan for his church yeah and um and that really speaks to me you know we have got so many wasted places around us and being a builder foundation is such an important thing to me and god always starts with a foundation doesn't he god is a foundational god you know you know, if we've got our foundation right, we can build anything, yeah? yeah? And everything that, you know, everything that we're going to learn today from the Word that we're going to look at always goes back to foundation, 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 foundation. If our foundation's right, we can build anything. And if our foundation's right in our hearts with, with what God's doing in us, then God can build anything in us. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, I just pray tonight, Lord, that you would take these lips of clay, Father, and let them be anointed by the Holy Ghost. Father, speak through me those things that you would have spoken to your people. Communicate those things which are in your heart, Lord. Lead us, Father, and guide us, Holy Spirit, I pray, in the precious name of Jesus. And we'll give you all the honor and all the glory. Amen. Amen. So the Lord's had me studying out, and I think I, st I, I actually, um, I preached this last time I was here about the finished work of the cross. And, um, and we were singing about it tonight, you know, um, you know in, the, in, in a couple of the songs, you know. And I could just really hear in the words of those songs, you know, we were framing our world with our words. You know, we were speaking over ourselves how God sees us, how God thinks about us, how he feels about us, you know. And the message that the finished work of the cross that the Lord, you know, had me study and has been, had me still studying now for some time is about that what we uh, as born again Christians, as believers, as mature believers, OK, um, that he wants for us to know that what he has done was a complete work. You know, if we look at Genesis, it says that, that he sat down after his work and he rested. It was finished. When Jesus went to the cross and in those final moments before he let go of his breath in the earth, the words that came out of his mouth were, it's finished. 
It's a finished work. That means it's rest. That means it's peace. That means there's no struggle in it. And I think for so many of us, where, where the enemy can come in and, and I suppose play havoc in us will be through our learnt behaviour, will be through how, um, through our experiences. You know, we're celebrating our fathers this weekend, you know, and I was speaking to someone before the service and we just, and they were just saying what a wonderful, you know, they only had their father for 12 years of their life, but those 12 years shaped and helped them in their belief for what God could and wouldn't do in their lives. He said, an example there, her earthly father had set an example for her of, of for God. And that's so true. You know, our earthly fathers have, can play, have played sometimes a really positive and strong part, sometimes a really negative part, you know. And what the father, your father in heaven wants you to know is that he loves you, he adores you, what he's done is a complete work. And for you, it's a matter of then you walking in what he's promised you, what belongs to you, and you living your life in that fashion. Amen? Amen. Yeah? So we do have, um, we do have um, learned behavior that we need to deal with a lot of the time. And, but the way we deal with that is that we effectively and how God wants us to do it is through his word. Can you say amen? amen? Yeah. You see, God's word is alive and it's living. Amen. And when we put God's word to work in our lives, it does a work from the inside out. Yeah. I can do stuff in my life sometimes and it's from the outside in. And I sort of think, you know, and all we sort of think, well, what people are going to see or how they perceive us or whatever. But it's actually what is happening on the inside of us that is going to make that eternal and everlasting change in our life. That's going to enable us to be who God created us to be. Okay, And so that's why we always go to his word. We use his word because it's a mirror. It's a mirror that reflects how he wants us to see ourselves. When we hold up the word, we should see ourselves in what God is talking about. Yeah. And it shows us also, you know, I'm a how-to person. Don't, you know, I want to, I just don't want to know that there's a problem. I want to know, well, what's the solution to that problem? I say to people in business when they come to me, don't come to me with a problem. I acknowledge it might be a problem, but come to me with a solution. Come and tell me, look, we've identified this and it's, there's an issue, but this is what we're going to do to fix it. I like those type of people, yeah? And that's what I love about God's word, you know? You know, I love, I'm a, I'm a note taker, I'm a, a list maker, I'm always organising myself, I'm always, you know, months and weeks and years ahead and planning and all that sort of stuff. And at the end of my, I used to be at the top, but I put it at the, at actually the end of my, my, all my to-do list, you know, and it says, God has made a way in his word for everything I need today. Every problem that I have today, everything I'm going to face today, there's an answer in his word. Yeah. And so, because, um, again, where the enemy wants to get us is in our soul and in our mind and us working out how we're going to do something. You say, you, you see, you, you have a spirit and you have a soul and you live in a body. It's your earth suit. If I had to go to space, I'd have to put on a space suit. So God gave you in the earth an earth suit, yeah? And in this earth suit, okay, you know, I have two ways of dealing with things. I'm going to deal with things through my soul or I'm going to deal with things through my, my spirit. I'm going to deal with things in the way my intellect is going to say for me to do things. I'm going to deal with things on how God says I should deal with things. I mean, let's look at Adam. When Adam um, fell and Adam and he fell in the garden, and the Lord said to him, when he came down to call the night, and he said, Adam, Adam, where are you? It wasn't a geographical question. He knew where he was. He knew exactly where he was. 
but he knew that he'd been separated in his spirit from his father. And it was at that moment when he fell in sin that Adam fell from being spiritually connected to God and having a constant stream of just insight, understanding, like just it would be bam, bam there to like all of a sudden, what am I going to do? Instead of faith, there was fear. He didn't know. He was separated. So we say like this, he fell from revelation to information. All of a sudden, he was bound to live by his senses, bound to live by what he could see and feel and touch. And, and all of a sudden, that spiritual, because that spiritual connection was gone. It wasn't there. I mean, you know, I, I, sometimes I've had moments where I felt, Lord, are you really there? You know? Hello. But that's nothing to do with him. That's to do with me. That'll be a geographical thing about where am I? Where have I moved in my relationship with him? Yeah? Glory to God. So let's go to the word because the word is where we should always start. Can you say amen? amen. Because it's the word according to God and not the word according to Rod. <laughs> amen. And I love that because his word is true. So let's have a look at what it says in, and we're talking about this because what we want to have a look at here is that we want to look at how um, we, um, we want to look at, uh, I wanted to talk to you today about your imagination. And I wanted to, um, I want to look at how and see how we perceive ourselves and how God perceives us through his word. Amen. Okay. So let's have a look at what it says in Genesis. So. And we're going to read a little bit of scripture, but that's good. Yeah? God's, God's word is good. Amen? <laughs> Amen. And I'm reading from the Amplified here, so I'll read off my notes. Um, okay, so in Genesis 1, 26 and 28, it says, uh, and, let's, and I'll read this. It says, And God said, Let us, Father, Son, and Holy, God, Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image, after our likeness. Let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, the tame beasts, and over all of the earth over everything that creeps on the earth. So if anyone's interested, we've got, you've got authority over creeps, okay? <laughs> All right, just, just so you know. Any creeps around, say, I've got authority over you. It says in Genesis chapter 26. <laughs> so God created man in his own image. And in his image and likeness, he, God created him, male and female, and he created them. And God blessed them. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it using its vast resources and services uh, in the service of God and man and having dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living thing and creature that moves upon the earth. Amen? Amen. So it was there that God established his dominion mandate. His dominion mandate was he gave who authority? Did he give the animals authority? Who did he give authority? us he's man he's woman yeah okay and he's he said i've created you in my image and i've given you i've given you authority so he's mandated us okay and what i love about that is that god actually never even when adam sinned he didn't remove that dominion mandate he never went and said okay you've stuffed up we're gonna just cancel the whole that whole you know just let's rewind and when you guys work it out, I'll decide whether you're worthy of having it again, okay? He didn't recall it. He did it. He, it was still there because he was a planner, amen? Oh, what a plan. Oh, what a planner. That's your father in heaven. Oh, I love him. Glory to God. Let's have a look at what it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. It says, even uh, when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trans." Uh, trans uh, trespasses, sorry. He has made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life of which uh, he quickened him, uh, for it is by grace, his favour and mercy, uh, which you did not, de did not deserve, that you were saved, delivered from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation. He raised us up together with him and made us to sit down together with him, giving us a joint seating with him in heavenly places or heavenly sphere. 
by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus the Messiah, the Anointed One. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his uh, free grace, his unmerited favour, in which uh, and his kindness and goodness of a heart towards us in Christ Jesus. For it is by this free grace, this uh, God's unmerited favour, that you were saved and delivered from judgment and made partakers with Christ through salvation through your faith. This salvation is not of yourselves. It's not of your own doing. It hasn't come through anything of your own or any of your own striving, but it is a gift of God. So what can we see now? We can see that Jesus has come. He has paid the price. He has restored us back to God. He has become the link. He has become the atonement. His blood is, was what made the way for us. And he has, it says he has seated us in heavenly places with him. Amen. Did he seat us at his feet? Or did he seat us beside him? You know, if, you know, we have a large family, you know, and we get the family around. And I don't say, okay, well, you like can sit at the, the, on the floor and I'll pass out the soup, you know. <laughs> Everyone's got a spot at the table. Mother is very insistent that everyone has a spot at the table. Even if we've got to squeeze everyone around, everyone gets a spot at the table, yeah. That's how it is with God, you know. You have a spot at the table, you know. You are seated with him in heavenly places. You are no longer separated. You are no longer, that disconnection that Adam felt is gone. We are now reconnected with him. Can you say amen? amen? Glory to God. Let's have a look at Psalms. Chapter 8 and verses 4 to 6. I love this. And this is an angel talking. It says, What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of God, earth born, that you care for him? Yet you've made him a little lower than God or heavenly beings. You've crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over, over, over all of your works and over all of your hands, and you put all things under his feet. Wow. He's given us, he's crowned us. He has given us dominion over all things. He's put all things under our feet. Glory to God. I mean, we could stop right there, couldn't we, hey? How exciting is that? All things under our feet. I mean, we could just keep going. I could keep going. I could, I could keep going scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture and show you your position. And this is what we're looking at. Your position in Christ. Amen? In Him. All right. But for us to take this, if we're going to walk in this dominion, if we're going to live in this, we're going to have to get rid of the pampas. We have to put our big boy pants on, our big girl pants on. We're going to have to take some responsibility. And we might have to be a little bit intentional. Yeah? Because I just see a lot of 50-year-old babies walking around, you know, going, you know, dad, 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 dad. And he loves his babies. I mean, I love my grandchildren. I love my babies. I love my, all my kids, you know. But there's a time when I have an expectation that they're going to stand up and they're going to walk and they're going to talk and they're going to get potty trained and they're going to start to be able to feed themselves and they're going to go from milk to solid food. Amen. And this is going to happen when, and, and, and don't, you know, he, God wants us to rely upon him. He wants us to lean on him. He wants us to call out to him when we need him because he's, he's, he's dad. You know, uh, like Deb said before, you know, he's that one that can move everything out. He's got that, you know, he's, you know, he's more than capable, but he has empowered you. And he wants, to, he wants you to see that he's empowered you. And that's going to be, that's going to need you to set, set, take that responsibility, that intentionality and go and say, okay, I'm going to be responsible at this. I'm going, to, I'm going to take my authority and I'm going to start to speak like my dad. You know, with lots of parents in the room today, I'm sure. And, and can you remember just, you know, through the time of watching your kids grow up, you know, and both husband and wife, and you said, 
oh, he just he, he talks like his dad, or he walks like his dad, or he you know sounds like his mom, or she sounds like her mom, or she looks like her mom. You know, like there's a reflection. There's a we 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 you know we we copy you know, and it makes our father a proud when he hears you starting to speak the word, when he hears you standing up and starting to decree and declare a thing or two. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Amen. I mean, because you've got authority to decree and declare things. Amen. He gave you a mouth. He gave you a tongue. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, we need to stop limiting God through our small mindedness and renew our mind to remove small thinking, yeah? In Romans 12 and 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world and this age and fashioned after it or adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind uh, by its new ideals and its new attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God and even the things which are good and acceptable and perfect in Him and in His sight. I love that it says, it says, it says you, will, you, you will prove, so that you may prove for yourselves. So that you may prove for yourselves that His Word works. Amen. You know, if we, don't, if we don't put God's Word to work, if we don't start to exercise and speak that Word and put it to work in our lives, then how can we then how are we going to know? What are we measuring against? You know, I want to, you know, I'm always, you know, I'm always talking to my father, you know, and I always find in life when if something's not going the way I want it to go, or, you know, and I've had plenty of times, you know, when, when you know, like I've got a big band down in my life, I've got a lot of things, you know, and, I, and there's, I've had my times where I had my boo-hoos before God and sitting a bit of a sook, you know, and going, what's going on? You know, like, you know, and it, it just... When I finish, when I shut up, you know, he just says, well, what are you saying, son? I mean, what are you speaking? What's coming out of your mouth? Are you being consistent? You know, and I had a situation, um, you know, over the last 12 months, you know, where I was really had to, I had to maintain real consistency in everything that I was saying and everything that I was doing. And I've come, I was coming through the end of this, this thing that I was going through. And it was just one day the Lord just said to me, he said, I'm really proud of you, Rod. I'm really proud that you've stood your ground and you haven't been moved. Because I, I was just really sort of getting excited about what I was seeing God do. And what he was manifesting of these things I've been standing on for so long. And he said to me, he said, you know, this is a just... This just didn't fall out of the sky. This has happened, son, because you've remained consistent. This has happened because you've remained steadfast. This has happened because every morning you've got up, you know, with a song in your heart, and you've worshipped me, and you've praised me, and you've thanked me, and you've let me be Lord. You know, we need to let him be Lord. In this doing, I'm talking about, it's not a religious thing. It's not a work thing, you know. It's not like I've got to do a hundred confessions so God can hear me. No. It says he heard you when you prayed. He said to Daniel, he says, in actual fact, when, when Daniel was you know, fasting those 21 days, it says, it, the angel, when he finally got to me, says, Daniel, from the moment you prayed, I was sent. From the moment he prayed. And he wasn't living in a new covenant. He was still under the old covenant. You have a new covenant. You have a better covenant. You have the covenant of the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus. You can know and have assurance that when you pray that He hears you. So I'm not talking about works, you know. It's not, you know, and, I'm, and I'm a confessions man. I, be, I believe in framing my world. Every day I frame my world with my words, you know. I, you know, the blood of Jesus, don't live home without it. You know, I don't wake up any day before, and I haven't left my home before I've covered my family, my wife, my children, my grandchildren, every single person working for me under the blood. You know, I don't go into any day before I've spoken God's promises over me. 
I, mean, I want his heaven-born possibilities raining down in my life. And it says that, that he will rain windows of heaven over my life. But if I don't speak and call those things, then what, what, where's the, what's, what's, what's provoking the action? What's drawing it down? Like they say, rain doesn't fall, it's drawn. Rain from heaven is drawn to the earth. When you pray, your father's ears, he hears you from the moment you pray. The word is sent, but sometimes the enemy comes to get in the way of that. But I'm saying to you today, don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on your promises. Don't give up on those imaginations and those things that God has put in your heart. Because I'm telling you right now, those things are from God. Those dreams are from God. Who has a dream here that night? Who's got a dream, something you believe in God for, something that you believe, something he might have told you when you were a little boy or a little girl that you haven't seen it come to pass yet? You know, those dreams, he put in your heart. He put those seeds in your heart. Do you think the devil's going to put the seeds in your heart? He's a seed killer. He doesn't love you. He doesn't give you any quarter. But God planted those dreams in you. He planted those imaginations in you. And imagination is such an important part of who we are as spiritual beings. It is so important that you stop and spend time developing your godly imagination. We have a, a large property up in Wonga Park, just under 20 acres. And we've been there for about 23 uh, years. And when we first went there, I mean, I didn't have anyone to help me. I virtually did everything myself on that property. I built everything on that property. And I would work every Saturday. That was the only day I had, you know. I would work from like 5 o'clock in the morning through to 6 o'clock at night, you know. And I'd work hard all day, you know. And, you know, and I got to a point in the journey, and I'm not sure what year it was, but it was about, um, I, don't, I, can't, I don't even, I can't remember, maybe it was year 4, 5, 6, and the Lord says to me, he says, um, one, he says to me one day, he says, I want you to stop working from now on at three o'clock on a Saturday, Rod. Go have a shower. And he said, now I want you then to, and I had a, like a four-wheeler bike, you know. He said, jump on the four-wheeler, take your notepad. And he said, I want you to just drive around to different parts of the property and let me talk to you about things. Let me show you what my intentions and what my heart is for that property for the property let me speak into that space let me let me tell you what my dreams are for you here and you know i would do that and i'd write those things down and i could take you to our property today and walk you around and and show you all those dreams that have come true and all those things they started from an imagination you are that's how god created you you want to see things moving and happening in your life? Spend time developing that imagination. I remember another time when I was early in my career and, and I, you know, I used to go to a gym down in Natawadi and I was, you know, at, it was, I was still very young. I, you know, I wasn't even really learning. I didn't really, wasn't really using my faith to be honest in those days. It was just me and me trying to work stuff out, you know. I didn't really, I knew God loved me. I knew he was for me. I knew his promises. But I wasn't using my faith. I wasn't, I wasn't, I hadn't, didn't really even see what I was doing in business as a ministry at that point. I saw what I was doing as just, I'm working, I'm making money, I'm supporting my family, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. But what God showed me was that what I was doing in business was a ministry. It wasn't just a job. It was a ministry. And anyway, I'm at the gym and I, and I, and I just had so much pressure on me this day, you know. I've got 70 employees, you know, 14, 70, 70 contractors, 14 people in the office, and, and, just, and, and, and business was hard. You know, I was working for builders in those days. I can say a lot of lovely things about those people these days. <laughs> they, they didn't treat me very well, you know. You know, though it was just like, and anyway, I just, I remember I was just, I'd gone, started to do a workout and I was just so frustrated. I just, I thought, no, I'll stuff that, you know. <laughs> Went down to the pool and I'd usually go to the pool and in the sauna and in the pool. And 
went in there and I was there for about five minutes and I'm like, Ugh! you know, and I grab my towel and I'm, I'm walking out the thing to go get changed and, and go back to the office. And the Lord just says to me, he says, where are you going? I said, I'm going back to work, Lord. You know, I can't, you know, my brain is about to explode. He said, turn around and go get back in that pool. Let me minister to you. Let me speak to you. Let me talk to you about what I see. Let me stimulate in your heart my dreams and my godly imaginations about what I have planned for you in this ministry. You know, I, I didn't want to do it. But I did it. And he ministered to me. He spoke to me. And I learned from that. I learned a very valuable lesson that day. You know, like the enemy wants to get you into a place in life where, you know, it's sort of like, and I've got a cleric personality. I'm very strong-willed. And it took me a long, long time to learn how to yield my will to God. Because I know everything, right? I know I'm, I'm a builder, you know? I actually had a client say to me once, <laughs> he was a Jewish guy, and he says, he says, it's so frustrating. He says, you just know everything. He says, is there anything you don't like? It's not like I don't ask you a question, you try to trip me up all the time. It's like, can you just, just, and I said, well, I, I'm, that's what I do. You employed me because I'm the best, and that's what I do. But, but that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough to quieten my mind at night. That wasn't enough to stop the anxiety when it came. It wasn't enough to stop the fear when the enemy would come, you know, at three o'clock in the morning and tell me you're gonna lose everything and you're not gonna make it and, you know, and, and you know. It wasn't enough, but God was enough. And his imaginations and his love for me were enough. But you see, what I had to learn how to do in that time was how to meditate in his word and build that foundation, build that foundation, build that foundation, build that foundation, put it in, put it in, put the word in my heart, keep putting it into my heart, keep building it. But also allow myself to dream and spending that time to dream. It's such an important thing. You might go and say, well, Roger, yeah. Yeah, it's just me, you know, like, I'm a housewife, or I'm, I've just got to, I work for someone, or what? I love it. Copeland says, what, a janitor can't have a jet? I mean, if you like flying jets in the weekend, why can't you have a jet? I mean, the enemy wants to get you cornered down into this little pocket down here, and telling you what you are and what you can and what you can't do. This word is full of promise. And he wrote these promises for you. And he wrote these promises for me. And there's an answer to every single thing that you need in your life today in here. But will you yield yourself to it? Will you give yourself to him? Will you, when he wakes you in that, you know, I mean, I've, I've just learned now when he wakes me at three o'clock in the morning and he wants to talk. And I'm like, you know, I get five hours of sleep, Lord, you know. I've got to be up at five. He says, I oh, know, I want to talk. Okay, what do you want to talk about? You know, and I'm, I'm a lot more joyful, of course. <laughs> Not at first sometimes, but I warm up. I go have a cup of tea and, and I do. I go sit there and, and sometimes he just wants to sit there with me. Other times he wants me to pray for someone. Some, other times he wants me to just to speak into the day or speak over someone I might know. Sometimes he just wants to speak into me. That's what I love about him. You know, he is, he loves you so much. He loves and adores you so much. And those imaginations and those dreams that he put in your heart, he put those dreams in there. And don't let the enemy steal your dreams. Amen. Yeah? You know, his name is above every name. It's above every sickness, every disease you can think of. His name is above every name. He is above all things. And you know what? He lives inside of you. He lives inside of you. Can you say amen? amen. I'll tell you off my notes. <laughs> God's good. 
So how do we see ourselves? How do you see yourself right now? If you stop and think in your own mind, you know, is it that I'm blessed? Is it that I'm loved? Do you think that, you know, do you think everything works out for me? Is it that I'm smart, I'm pretty, I'm healthy, I'm strong? I'm rich, I'm blessed, everything works out for me? Or is it I'm a failure, no one cares for me, no one cares what happens to me? I've never got enough, I'm always struggling, I'm always sick. You know, you see your thoughts have been established upon what you meditate upon. Even what sometimes what people said to you, you know. Sometimes, you know, there might be some things in your life, you know, that that have just been, you know, just welded into the fabric of your soul because of what something said, someone said to you. And you can't shake that, you know. And I'm gonna tell you right now that the only natural way you can do that is, is through God's word. Amen. You'll replace that thought. You gotta replace that. You know, don't, you know, the enemy is gonna tell you you can't make it. The enemy's gonna tell you no good. He's gonna say that, you know, like, well, why, why should you be blessed? Why should you have your own home? Why should you live a long life? Because his word says you should. He said, with a long life will I satisfy you and show you yourself my salvation. You know, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. You know, it says that he'll give his angels charge over you. This is all Psalm 91 I'm speaking out of right now. You know, it says that they might come from you one direction, they'll just go another direction. It says, under your feet you will tread on your enemies. They're not going to tread on you. You know, but you have to put this first place in your heart. Dig into this word. Build a foundation. So what comes out in that time of pressure is His Word. We're going to have to meditate upon it. We're going to have to build that, build that, build that, you know. And just quickly, I'll, I'll close with this, but, you know, there was a time, um, going back about 10 years ago, and I was, I was going through a real, I, was, I mean, I'd never ever had anxiety in my life. I never suffered from fear. You know, my wife had always, um, for a long time, been tormented with fear. And Kay um, had to really build a really strong foundation in God's word about what, how, you know, how God saw her to overcome that fear, you know? Couldn't get on a plane, couldn't get on a, you know, like it was just debilitating. I remember we were once, we were, when the, the girls, the older girls were little and we were up in Marineville and I said, we're going to Joy Flight. <laughs> And, and I turned around and got, we were about to take off back to the plane and she's like, and I thought, oh, goodness me, you know. And I was doing work up in Rimbio later on when we were building a Safeways up there and, and she flew up a couple of times with me and she's like, you know, she's hanging onto the thing, you know, and I thought, and like we got up there, she's like, I can't fly back. <laughs> I said, I can't drive back. It was real. This fear was real. And she had to build a foundation through the word in her heart so she could overcome this fear. Anyway, I was going through this anxiety and it was sort of like, and it was a real time of pressure. I was under a lot of financial pressure. And, uh, and again, I put myself in a place, you know what I mean? God, God, God does not put us in places to test us. You know, it talks about it, Peter, you know, he, he doesn't, you know, he's a good, good father. He's not going to give you a dose of cancer to treat you, teach you something, okay? <laughs> you know, that's not who he is. You know, the trouble, I'm, I'm here to tell you that the troubles I've experienced in my life are because of my decisions and the things that I've done and the places I put myself in I shouldn't have been in. Every single time. I'm not blaming God for any of it. They were my choices, things that I did. In my clericness, in my, in my stubbornness, in my thinking, I've got this under control. I mean, belting along with God at a million miles an hour and going grass, and I just decided, oh yeah, but I've got this from here, Lord. Just, you can just have a seat, you know? <laughs> He's like, fine, I have a seat, you know? <laughs> and it was actually at that point, this is what had happened, you know? And, um, and I tell you what, you know, three o'clock every morning, I'd wake up and the enemy would be there and he'd be like a trip hammer on my head. You're gonna lose everything, you're a failure, this, that, you know? And man, I was freaked out, you know, like I mean, I'd never experienced fear, I'd never experienced anxiety. And I'm going through this anxiety, like I'm just thinking, what is this? It was crippling, 
You know, I just, I, you know, anyway, I, and I'm like, and I was just sobbing, 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 you know, and, and the Lord will cry with you. And that's why I'm having a good cry. But he said, the answer's in the word. I said, whereabouts do I go? He said, go to Matthew chapter six. And I started to read about how he, he feeds the birds of the air and clothes the lilies of the field. How much more does he love me? And I built that foundation, I built that foundation, I built that foundation, I built it, and I just kept reading and reading and reading and reading it. And then why, do, why are you gonna worry about tomorrow? What are you gonna put all this pressure on tomorrow? You know, let tomorrow take care of itself, it says at the end. You know, it says, you know, just submit yourself to God and, and, and serve Him and let Him be Lord. And He'll give you all the desires of your heart. Amen. Yeah? And, and it just got, and this is like, it went on for about three months. But I got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger in His Word until one night, he was there and I said, do you want me to read it to you again, do you? Do you want me to read his word to you again? Are you still here? And he just took off and he never came back again. Amen. Yeah? You know, we've all got our experiences, we've all got our stories, you know. What I want to emphasize to you tonight that, you know, he is more than enough. You know, that you know, he's put imaginations and dreams on the inside of you. Because he says, I've got plans for you. I've got plans for your benefit, for your welfare, for your life. He said, I've predestined those plans at the foundation of the earth. I put those dreams inside of you. You know, he hasn't given Isabel the dreams he's given me and vice versa. He hasn't given Wendy the dreams that he's given me. But he, and I he hasn't given me Wendy's dreams. But he has given her dreams. He's given Isabella dreams. Your pastor's dreams. Each, every single person here tonight. Dreams and imaginations. He's put them in your heart. Don't let the enemy steal those dreams and those imaginations. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. I just wanted to finish off quickly. Have I gone too long, Pete? No, you got it. Two minutes? And I just thought, you know, just, and again, just because the Word of God is alive and it's active and it brings life. And when we, when we read God, it charges the atmosphere and it charges things around us. And I thought we'd just do a couple of confessions together. Is that all right? I'll read them out and you repeat them after me. They're really simple, yeah? Okay. I let the peace of God rule in my heart and I refuse to worry about anything. I will not let the word of God depart from before my eyes for it is life unto me. And I found that it is health and healing to all of my flesh. God is on my side. God is in me now. Who can be against me? He has given unto me all things. I said all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Therefore, I'm a partaker of his divine nature. I'm a believer. Say, I'm a believer. And these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak with new tongues. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keeps my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. And things which are good and pure and perfect and lovely and of a good report, I think on these things. I let no corrupt communication proceed out of my mouth, but that which is good to edifying, 
that it may minister grace to the hearer. I grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby I am sealed unto the day of my redemption. I speak the truth of the Word of God in love. And I grow up. I said I grow up into all, all things through Jesus Christ, my Lord. No man can take me out of his hand because I have eternal life. I'm delivered. I said I'm delivered from the power of darkness and I'm translated into the kingdom of his dear son. I have put off the old man and put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him who created me. I'm increasing in knowledge, in the knowledge of God. I'm strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Last one, the joy of the Lord. I said the joy of the Lord is my strength and the Lord is the strength of my life. Amen. Praise God. Bless you, my friend. That wasn't that good. Yes. Wasn't that good?